last week our topic was the way to into your ministry and with this topic we what did we talk about last week what was the main topic so the title was the way to ministry but what was the points the main points what I talked about it was the appointed the appointment our topic is the way to ministry but the first topic we talked about was the appointment and we talked about a divine appointment about somebody we talked about Paul Saul and Paul how Saul had a divine appointment with Jesus and what did Jesus like how Jesus turned Saul's life around into Paul so Jesus met Saul and something happened into his life and we talked about it if we didn't meet Jesus in a certain way we cannot serve God so we see in many people's life and maybe even in our life we heard about Jesus we heard about a lot of sermons about Jesus but there was not this heavenly appointment this with this special meeting with Jesus which um, transformed our lives so you can see many Christians within church they are they're not progressing well they're not growing well because they are still moving in the old panels in the old matters and they're not transforming into God's ways because God wants us that we meet him and that he will start to transform our character our our language everything has to be transformed and be changed through Jesus Christ so so this change that Jesus wants to do in our love people have to see and by this change and this transformation which is taking part in our lives there people can see that we met God that we truly met Jesus in our lives and we saw that as Paul met Jesus he asked him two questions the first question Saul asked Jesus said who are you and Jesus answered and he said I am the one whom you persecute and whom you um, want to destroy and the second thing Saul said what should I do and Jesus didn't answer in a direct way but he said go this city and I will tell you what to do so Jesus sometimes he meets us he answers us but he didn't tell us really what we should do because he says go to church and learn my ways because there in church I want you to grow I want you to grow in a certain way so you can move into my ways so in Acts chapter 2 you can read that the church was gathering every day to grow in the word to grow every day and to be together in church every day so I tell you all the time the real growth into your Christian life is not within Sunday mornings no it's the growth will bring if you come more often maybe on Tuesdays or Wednesdays and you meet with each other we meet many times here in church and it's very important and it's good that we have all these programs two or three times a week because if you come and if you are called to grow and you are called for ministry you can grow in a certain way so that you can be able to be a minister of God and within this time um, of gathering a lot we can see um, what calling us and God what calling God put into your life so you can um, so we can grow together and we can set you free into your ministry in the right way and this is the calling of the church the calling of churches to that each and everybody yeah even at each and everybody's ministry will be revealed and our church helps you to grow that you can step into your ministry and I told you too many times this kind of service we do Sunday mornings it's not a it's not a normal service it's like a pilot project 
and this kind of project, it's too much sacrifice. I, for myself, I know when I wake up, but I don't know when I go to sleep. But I don't sleep a lot, but I'm, I'm in joy. When I'm home, I with my children, I help them for homework. We go out with the, with the forest. But sometimes now my children are more old, so they like to go by themselves. But I go with them, maybe with our small boys for football. But I really try that my family is in the right place and that they are um, nourished well with food, with the word of God, with health. So my family is in is um, supported well. But this church, this takes a lot of sacrifice. This church needs a lot. Yeah, it takes sacrifice. The first sacrifice in this ministry was my life. So if you want to understand my life, you, it's hard to understand because my life, my life is very weird. As I started to minister for God, I thought, in my family, there will be never sickness because I'm a children of God. But I started to serve God. But in 2013, the Lord says, now the time that you uh, go out and do my works. We are praying and fasting at home. My woman, uh, my wife was always praying and fasting because we realized something was moving. But as God called us into as God called us into ministry, six years of sickness started. So um, my my youngest son is just just got born, so he only knew his mother sick. So it was a very hard, hard test for our family. My youngest boy only knew his mother sick, but the Lord told us. No, open the book, open the Bible, declare and declare. I read Josiah chapter 8, I was crying, I was crying, and the Lord asked me, are you ready to walk into my ways? And I answered God, whatever the cost, I will, I will walk on your ways. And then the Lord started to bring me in to USA, to Canada, to Ecuador, to Colombia, to Asia, and he started to bring me everywhere. I was home for two weeks, and then I was two weeks in international travels. And all these tr journeys helped me to understand cultures, helped me understand different men of God from different nations. And the Lord always sent me to churches where they never saw deliverance, they never saw the prophetic service. So the Lord helped me to deliver pastors, I remember in Qatar, in the capital Doha, there was a church of 300 people, and this church was captured with um, wealth, with false um, preachings about wealth. And then the pastor said, oh, there's a man of God from Germany, please come to the front. So I started to share testimony. I started for 15 minutes, but three hours it took me until I finished my ministry because there were too many demons manifesting. And I was in the front and I asked myself, God, what is it? I stepped into Israel, I stepped into Washington. Same started in Turkey, the same started in Africa, the same started. And I was thinking, oh, you are mad. I am mad. Lord, I don't understand. Am I the only one? The Lord said, no, you know, you're not the only one. The big problem is the church they just decided by themselves what they want to do. And the Lord told me, if the church doesn't cast out demons, the, de the devils will um, impact the churches falsely. And wherever I come, 80% of the church start to manifest demons. So, so people fall to the ground and manifest demons like snakes. So I'm asking myself, hey, did the, what did the church miss? And the answer 
of the Lord to me was the fivefold ministry is are not active. The fivefold ministry is not active within the church. And this is where the and this is where the Lord says where false ministry and false teachings come into the church where for example say um, women are not allowed to teach, women are not allowed to serve in the in the Lord of God. And if people come, the fivefold ministry is not within the church anymore. It's demonic. It's demonic teaching. That's how Satan brought demonic teaching within to the church. And the church started to die. People come tired. People come with the same sickness. And on Sunday, next Sunday, they come with the same and they never change and our children get born they never see miracles they never see the power of God that's why oh church is powerless and this is how the church of God is and this is how we raise a generation of Christians who don't know the power of God and since maybe 70, 80, 100 years we don't see power and then for example you bring a Muslim or a Buddhist comes to Christ and then you bring him to Sunday each Sunday and he will never change and there, he will never experience the power and this should be church no this cannot be church and this church this certain church here Tabernacle Church it's a big big sacrifice we had to um, we had to sacrifice our nights to pray and I was thinking oh my my children and but the Lord says I don't care about your children I will care about your children because if nobody sacrifices himself um, this church will never make it so the Lord said if nobody is praying if nobody is sacrificing the church will never move and will never make it that's why it's written in book of Acts chapter 2 it says every day believers were in the church and if you say here in the western world every week we every day we meet one hour people are saying oh no i have to do this i have to do this i have to do this so people cannot won't do it we recently been 10 days to africa 10 days churches were full people came from everywhere they came from they came from work when because they know the blessing. The blessing only comes from church. The blessing has come from Jesus Christ. This is my only dependence I have. In Western world, we say, oh, you are overdoing things. But in Africa, you do go every day if something is going on. But so for me, I do my things at home. I do my homeworks. But then I come to church. But we could start meeting only for one day a week. We could do it, but you will never grow in a, in the way you do right now. You, s you see the... Um, do you know the story about Gideon? Gideon had a big army going to church, but not everyone who was within the army was not able to go into war. The Lord says, who only the ones who love him more than his own fields, more than his own work, are able to go into war for God. I recently had a business trip to Austria for one week. I not even thought about it, but the, my boss said within Austria, I will, fire, I will fire you. But as he told me this, I never thought about, oh, how should I... Um, finance my family, how should I finance um, my life? I never worried about it because um, I knew the Lord would take care. So because he is now telling the story about his, his job that the boss asked him to do go four months to Austria to work, but he said, no, I cannot do it. I cannot leave four months for my family. I cannot four months this church. So I told him no. So the boss fired him because I knew my children need me, the church need me, and I need myself. I need my own soul. So I cannot leave this big thing. And now you could say, 
oh, I'm in irresponsible to leave my job. And But I said, no, this kind of time is over, where I'm four months gone for work. I want to offer my life for God. I'm ready to invest my whole life out of into church. This kind of church is a pilot project. From this church, there will be too many other churches. We will start too many other churches. We will go into the nations. We will, we will um, bring, we will bring the glory of God to the nations. And soon we will start 40 days fasting to seek the Lord, to seek His glory and to call upon souls to get lives, to bring cleansing into the life. Whatever brings bondage into the church, we want to use this time to cast everything out and to cleanse the church. If your example at home and you don't see the bad condition of church, Oh, you need prayers because the Lord is saying, if he will come to, if he will come back, will he find faith within the world? And I don't want to bring you fear, but I will tell you something. Joshua told the Israelites, my house and me, we will serve the Lord. And what's, how about you? Now it's time for decision to go into war. Whoever is not willing to go into war, David sent people home, Gideon sent people home, only the guys who are willing to go to war will make it. The time where you just lived how you liked, it's over. Just, just the time, what just did what you liked, it's over. Soulish Christianity is over. Because it's written, we don't do what we like. Galatians 4 verse 16 it says we don't do what we like because we are born to do a service that God likes Amen Amen the way to ministry if God calls us for ministry he really gives us a certain appointment and this certain task, the certain task is very important. The Lord called apostles and prophets into the New Testament, and these kind of people were willing to sacrifice everything. Peter had children and a woman, but he was willing to go wherever. John had family, they all had family, but they all were willing to sacrifice their life for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I learned something with the Lord. I had bad, bad times. But God taught me something. Out of these bad times, out of these bad times, I can only come out by God's power, by God's strength. Because the Bible says the righteous one has to go through many troubles. If you are in fear to go to step into uh, worse things, you, you're not ready yet for the ministry. If you're in fear um, for tests from God, you're not ready yet because there will be tests from God, but these tests will not be there to destroy you, but these tests are there to sharpen your character and to grow your character well. So the Lord is testing my character by this church. This church knows me very well. There's church in Los uh, Sometimes I go to you and maybe I give you a slap in your face <laughs> to test you. So I want to see how's your character. If you leave a church where your pastor is, um, is correcting you, is growing you well, if you if you leave a church, if you see something, if you see something um, bad in your church. Then you leave the, sorry, the only way to leave church if you see their sin active and false teaching. But if you leave church because you see your brother is moving falsely against you, but maybe this can be a test for your character. So whenever you see it's a character test, don't leave church. Only leave church when there's sin 
in church. If you leave church when people are against you or laughing at you, but if they're right or you think they are laughing against you, never leave the church because then you will never will be able to leave out of your emotions and your soulish life to step into spiritual Christianity. Because too many problems come from your soulish and your and your um, spiritual things. If you have if you have demons, or if you have any problems of in your in your marriage, you have to come to church. If you go to the doctor and they cannot do anything you come to church if you want to have deliverance you come to church but if the church will not able to answer this certain problems where should you go because the church needs to have the answer for deliverance needs to have the answer for healing needs to have the the church needs to have the power for transformation of souls if you don't if you are in a church where there's no transformation power it's not a church because I want to shock you today. Maybe you think you are, you, you know a little bit about God, you know a little bit about prayer, but you you don't have the power to overcome. You are in the wrong fundament. Like you are in the job and, and you lose your job, you're crying, you lose something, you're crying, you have the false fundament, you don't understand who God ways are. You see how your children maybe fall into uh, won't come home again and they go false ways and you start to cry your husband is not caring well about you and you're crying all day you didn't understand well this is the way this is the moment where you have to fall onto your knees and to pray for your woman pray for your husband and tell God nobody can rob my husband nobody can rob my children you have to be on your knees and pray you pray you pray and you love you pray and the Lord will help you that the Lord will um, discipline your husband or children so they come back. I know a testimony. Four years a woman declared this husband will come. This husband will come back. Man of God even came to her and said, just marry another one. This guy will never come back. But she declared in prayer, no, I only have one husband and this is my husband and he will come back. And she waited on them. Many people who break marriage and, re and remarry somebody, you, you can go to hell because you left the real covenant God. Everybody who divorces from a woman, there's only one reason why you are allowed to divorce a woman when somebody is cheating on you. But the Lord gave us the ministry, ministry of restoration. We are representatives of God on this earth. So Jesus went through harder situations and we might go through the same ones. Jesus went through certain situations. Your children are sick, don't panic. This sickness will be for the glory of God. My child will never sick, uh, will never die. Even the doctors say, my son will die. I will declare, no, my son will never die because the Lord gave me the children to bring him into the service of the Lord. Challenge God. Go against the works of the enemy. This is your ministry. Whenever God is calling you into ministry, he will start to prepare you in a certain way. And this, the ways he will use to prepare you, you will never think about. You could never think about it. You see Moses, how he was called to serve God. When was the time God, uh, Moses heard the calling? He was king of Pharaoh. He heard when he was king of Pharaoh, uh, king of Egypt. Sorry, 
Kino Moses, Moses, Moses was like Samuel. He heard the voice of God two times, but he didn't realize it was, was God. The third time, he ran to Elijah, and Elijah said, Oh, I realize this God is calling, the voice is calling you. It's God's voice who's calling you. And you don't call God, oh, you don't call him in a different, in, a, in your way. No, there's different, uh, that's a specific way how you can have to answer God. So Samuel said, if you hear the next time, do it like this, this and this. And then as next time you hear the voice of God, you can say, I'm your servant, Lord, here I am, answer me. So Moses was in Egypt and he had the seeds of the Hebrews inside of him and the seeds of Hebrew and this voice started to talk to Moses in a certain way in Egypt as he was still a king and he saw somebody was there was this certain voice in Moses who tried on a humanly way to um, reveal, um, to save his children by his own. And then he killed somebody, but this was only his own strength. But this own strength, he had to run out of Egypt because you, as you are hearing the voice of the Lord, this voice has to cast you out of Egypt because as you are hearing the voice of God, it's a certain it's a certain task you will receive, so you have to leave Egypt and, and out of Egypt you will be prepared. And with this and this and this preparation will help you to do the calling of God. Uh, Exodus chapter 2 Moses has to leave Egypt otherwise he would have been killed so Moses went into the desert he went to the house of Yetro he went in the house of Yetro and 40 years of his life he went to the desert to Yetro. Who was Yetro? A priest of Media. Uh, he was a servant of God. And within Yetro's house, Moses was got a job. He was a shepherd. He guided the, the sheep. He went to the desert with the sheep. He seeked for water. He seeked for shelter. He had to learn how to work with the sheep. He had to learn to fight against um, wild animals. Whatever he didn't learn in Egypt, he had to he had to learn in the desert. He was a king, but then he became a shepherd from up down. If the Lord wants you to be his servant, he takes you where you are up and he will bring you very much down so you can, um, so he can prepare you well. Moses had to um, reject all the powers of Egypt, the magic of Egypt, the food of Egypt, the might of Egypt. He had to leave everything behind so he can be a servant of God. Everyone who lived in Egypt was under witchcraft power because within Egypt the witchcraft is living because Satan is the snake the snake of witchcraft. And as Jesus was in the desert, Satan said, all this, like as he went, uh, tempted him in the desert, the devil offered Jesus his kingdom like the whole world. But Jesus said, no, it's not possible because I will never uh, bow my knees in front of you. But 
it's very easy to bow yourself before Satan. It's not only to really bend your knees, but it can be in your mind that you um, that you worship Satan. We will switch translation very fast. My wife is my wife. It's not someone else. And will not be someone else. I love my wife. And I support my wife. And I care for my wife. Satan, your thoughts, they don't fit in me. But if you start thinking I deserved a better man or a better husband or a better wife, you, you bow down before Satan. The, every time you have bad thoughts about your neighbors or your friends, you are bowing before Satan. My wife helps me that my children are subordinate to, to me. A wife never shall um, bring her children into rebellion against her husband. If you can't um, subordinate yourself before your boss, you bow before Satan. Rebellion means a bowing before Satan, rebellion against authorities, inside church and outside of church. And a lot of Christians bow before Satan. Satan only has access to us because of our flesh, our un uncrucified um, flesh. That's why the Bible says, walk in the spirit so that the, the devil can't tempt you. You know, you can pray and you can read and study the word, but you shall um, keep your thoughts safe. For example, Satan comes with lies, you are nothing, you cannot do anything. And the moment you start proclaiming it out of your mouth, you have accepted the words of Satan and the thoughts of Satan. Your mouth shall never proclaim the words and the thoughts of Satan. Don't proclaim I'm an idiot, but I'm a wonderful person, a creation in God. Maybe in my past I could not do things, but now with Christ I can do all things. Every thought that comes, you shall answer with the word of God. It is the way he brings you into the desert to, to teach you to think like Jesus, like God. You should have the same thoughts as Jesus. You shall have the same movement as Jesus. And these, move, and these movement, these um, are the thoughts of Jesus. Truth, the way in a life, written here and here. And uh, the Spirit of God helps us to go these ways. It's not a simple one, but with the Holy Spirit we can do it. And you are here, that we, so you can do it with the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 28. We know, so we know that all things are good, um, are good for the ones who love Jesus. If it rains or if, if there's sun, it's all to my best. Even I love snow. Even if I'm coming from Africa, I love snow. It's for my best. But don't invite me uh, skiing somewhere or snowboarding. Then it's I'm stopping. But I love snow because God created it. All things um, serve for good to those who love Jesus and who are called. 
Um, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good for those who are called according to his purpose. That means according to his purpose, you have to, you also have to walk. You can be called, but you have to say yes to this calling. We have all been called, but he's not forcing you or putting you under pressure. You are free to say, I'm entering my calling, I'm entering my ministry. If you, if you don't agree, you can say no. Um, the Lord can say, the sister um, is called to be a prophetess, but she says no. God can tell you, pack your bags and go for five months into Norway and evangelize on the streets, and then you can say no. But, but the no you're giving, as Jonah with the fish, you will be like Jonah in the, in the belly of the fish. Death can come. But because if God sees you, he doesn't see you, he sees the souls and the sheep that can be saved through your life. So when God sees you, he sees his kingdom that can be built through your life. If God sees you, he can see the love that he has put into you so that you can give others love and that you can bring others to salvation and deliverance. We, we further read verse 29 for those whom he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and those he predestined he also called and those whom he had called he also justified and those whom he justified he also glorified So, um, to see or to predestine also means to acknowledge. And if the Bible speaks about acknowledge, to recognize, it's the same as the Bible says, um, man and wife, they acknowledge each other in intimacy. It's like a, a sexual um, relationship between man and um, a woman. To be in intimate with a man or a woman. And this is, God wants to um, be intimate with you also, not in a human kind of way, but in a place where he can reveal himself to you, where he can expose himself to you, where he can show his nakedness. Do you know what the nakedness of God is? All mysteries and all secrets of the kingdom of God, all hidden things of the kingdom of God, all what what is the force of God he wants to reveal to him the mighty miracles he wants to reveal to you the power of God and um, the effect of God's power will be shown to you he wants to bring um, his character to you you were one who will always spoke bad and the more time you spend with God your language will be changed you will start speaking the heavenly language and it's the word of God. So if people attacked you, you started cursing them back. But now you say, um, hallelujah, bless you, bless the sister, bless my brother and my sister. You come home, husband attacks you and you, be, you stay silent and you say, thank you, thank you for this beautiful man, for this, um, the, one who had, the one who attacked me is not the man um, is not the man I married, but it's the spirit behind this man. And I love this man. And so you have to proclaim it out of your belly so that you can fight against the, the spirit. Or you're, you come home and your older brother, uh, older son is attacking you, and you will say, no, my son is, um, is called to um, walk with God, to serve the Lord. 
and then you can go into your private um, room or secret place and then can, you can pro proclaim and bound these spirits and these forces in, in the lives of your children or your hus husband or wife and so you can enter the fight uh, against the spirit that is attacking you through your son or through your family members but if you attack your your son when he's attacking you then you are f you're fighting the fight of the of the enemy so you using the tools of satan but you need the tools of the righteous love overcomes the evil so if you want to overcome people you have to do it by love not by words or evil words or curses you know who I am? No, I'm nothing because of Jesus. Only Jesus is in me. A dead person cannot speak. I'm dead in Jesus. I'm born in Jesus. Not longer I live, but Jesus lives in me. The way of the of service, you will go out and people will start to attack you. You will evangelize and people uh, will throw water over you. Your neighbors will start to gossip against you or your family members won't understand you any longer. But you know who has called you. You know what he will do or wants to do. And um, my sister who's working in the kindergarten, she is attacked, but she, she uh, learned to answer with um, the word of God. She is not attacking back. Because otherwise, what would people say about her as a Christian? No, through her life, people see, wow, this woman has Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Through your life, people recognize that Jesus is in you. You don't even have to speak about him. Just the way you treat people, they realize and recognize Jesus in you. They recognize, see Jesus through you, and that Jesus is with you. He has predestined and acknowledged those he has called and is intimate with them. So, also, not just to for new, but also predestined to conform, to be conformed to the image of his son. We are um, called to evangelize, to preach, and it's important to, to be like Jesus in all areas to be similar to him, his language, his attitude, his movement. He has called us, but this calling is not coincidentally or is dependent on human abilities, not because of human, your human abilities he has called you, no. He calls many people who are unable, who are weak. If you think I'm too weak to serve the Lord, I'm unable, I cannot do anything, then you are you are you are, then you are chosen, then you are the first one God wants. But the one who says of himself, Oh yes, I'm strong, I'm able, God will say, No, 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 you will sit as long as you will understand that you have nothing without me, that you are weak without me. So that's why Paul said, If I'm weak, I'm strong, because in my weakness God will show his glory. And he justified Jesus. And without this justification of God in us, we can't can't um, fight against Satan. Because every time you fight against him, he will attack you too. But the blood of Jesus is speaking louder, and it is um, justifying you. Every time Satan comes, oh, this wife, this woman, she was a, a prostitute, or this man was homosexual, or this woman was a lesbian. No, 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 she was. She no longer is because my blood has cleaned her. The blood of the lamb is changing your identity. You were a criminal, and you repent, and from this moment you are washed from your sins. So you cannot come into this church and the, the, the sin you have brought before Jesus yesterday, you can't bring him today again and again and again. One time you've done, your, you've done sin, then it's, then it's forgiven and it took, he took it away. So the blood cleanses us, he washes us and it justifies us. So when he sees you, he sees you through the blood of the lamb. 
that if Satan wants to see you, you are um, invisible because of the blood of the Lamb. And then he can also see Jesus Christ. But he tries always to attack. Romans 5, 9. Since therefore we have now, now been justified by his blood, much more shall be we be saved by him from the wrath of God. We overcome, we will overcome by the blood of Jesus and we are justified by the blood of Jesus. So if um, Satan wants to come and show you your old sin, no, you can say no. By the blood of Jesus, I, all my sins are cancelled. They are no longer. I, had, I don't have any sin. Do you believe that you don't have, that you have no sin any longer? That's what the Bible says. If you are in Christ, you are a new creation and you are not sinning any longer. What does it mean? You no longer live in sin. In the world, you consciously lied, or I consciously lied, or I consciously um, did fornication, or I consciously did things. But the moment I repented, the Bible says the one who is in Christ is a new creation. So the old has passed and the, everything became new. And now we walk in, in the newness that was given to us by Christ. I no longer live in sin. I'm holy. Who believes that he's holy? That's what the Bible says. You are holy. The moment you have received Jesus as Savior, you are holy. You are not your holy pa um, um, Pope, but you are the Holy One. We are the Holy Ones. We can write um, a letter, letter to the Holy Gabriel or to Ho Roly, Holy Roland or the Holy Marcus, right? Or the Holy, yes, we are holy. Yes, we are holy. Without this, we cannot walk this path. It's impossible. Um, second Moses. Jesus is the Lord. Honor to the Lord. Second Moses 3, verse 1 to 12. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian, and he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of Ubash. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn aside to see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. And it remembers me that of, an, of an answer um, that Samuel did too. Here I am. The, the first time Moses um, heard the voice of God was in Egypt, and it was a small voice. Because if you are amongst Egypt, it is difficult to difference, differentiate the voice of God because he was not friends with the voice of God yet. But in the house of Jethro, he has learned to recognize the voice of God, to see God, to, to grab God and to be in the presence of the Lord. That's why it was important that, he, that Moses had to go to Jethro because Jethro had to bring him into the works of God and t teach him how to sacrifice um, on the altar of God. 
Jeju had to teach him how to adore and worship this God. He, Moses was in need of these teachings. Samuel um, became, um, got this in the teachings of Elijah. Elijah was with Elijah. And Paul was with Barnabas. So Barnabas taught him for the first two years. So he, Barnabas was the one who brought Paul to, to the apostles. And this way, Paul learned how to seek God. And then God came among them, among them uh, in their midst and separated Barnabas and Paul for their ministries. So the time um, when Paul was with Barnabas, it was important for him and crucial because it gave him a lot of words and the, the church could see that Paul was truly called, although others rejected him. But Barnabas said, no, 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 this man is a, is a, toy, a to, tool of God. He will serve the Lord. And through Barnabas, uh, others um, also accepted him because of Barnabas. And then God brought Paul um, deeper, deeper into the preparation of ministry. Honor to the Lord. Then he said, verse 5, Then he said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And he, had, he said, I am the God of your father. So he is revealing himself as the God of covenant. Of, so I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction. Now it's important, look at it closely. I have surely seen the affliction of my people, or of Germany, affliction of, of Africa. I saw the affliction of Asia. I have surely seen the affliction of America, God speaks. God sees your affliction. So if you are hidden in your room, no one sees you, but you are crying. No one sees your pain, but God sees, I see your affliction. And every time God sees the affliction of, of people, of a nation, God moves someone, moves someone, God moves someone to give you a word. Um, a word of God can completely change your life. Just laying your hands or, or your a word can change your destiny. God says, I have seen, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmasters. I know their sufferings. What does God say? He has seen the affliction, he has heard their cry, and he knows their sufferings. Three important things. I have surely seen the affliction, so he sees the affliction of the people first. Second, he hears the cry. Thirdly, he knows their sufferings. I know her sufferings, their sufferings. Well, God knows the sufferings. Why he did not? Why did God not move until now? Why did He not do something until now? He He recognized the sufferings, but why did He not do anything? The answer is there is a time for everything. So, the sin, um, the measurement of sin was not fulfilled yet. The time was not fulfilled yet. So that deliverance could happen. And also, the man of salvation was still in preparation. So maybe you are the one who is the, one, the man of uh, salvation for this nation or the woman of salvation. Maybe the, the woman who wants, God wants to use. Did Moses knew that he had such a great calling? No, he did not. You see someone? 
You see my, you see my brother, oh, nothing can come out of him. You see my sister, oh, no. Everyone can do great things, but no, they can't. That is Mosa of this nation. Amen. Maybe it's the Mosa of this generation. This, or this Deborah of this generation. Humans, they see what is visible, but God, God sees in the, in the heart of people. Moses said, oh God said to Moses, I, I saw the affliction and I heard that cry and I know their sufferings. So if you have pain and you think no one knows my pain, no one has mercy on me, no, God is here and He knows your sufferings, He knows your crying, He sees he sees what you're doing in the secret place, and He is with you. If you have been alive until now, it's because Jesus let you live. If, you, if you're if you standing there where you're standing, it's because God has a calling with you, has a, um, an order for you, and with your family. He wants to do something, because your family is born to show many people the ways of God. Your family is born to show many people the ways of God. And through your family, many people will come to salvation. Through your family, many people will come to salvation. So in verse 8, he, God says, And I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egypt, Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land and a land flowing with milk and honey to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppressed them. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh. Now it's the order. Come, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, But I will be with you. And this, so the order is go and free my people. Amen. And then God gives a promise. I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that I have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Calling, order, promise. Promise of God in your life. What is your calling? You know what is fascinating to me? God says to Moses, I have came down to free my people. But did you see God freeing his people? Where he was running into Egypt and freeing those people? No. How did God came down? Through Moses and in Moses. God will never free Mannheim or Germany without you. Never. Never. Because God is spirit, and spirits can't free people. Only people can free people by the Spirit of God. People can only free people. God cannot just um, show up where the sin is active, but God needs your life and your family and your children. God needs your marriage to free those people in the world. That's why he comes as a spirit and lives in you, but, but your personality or your character, your soul is, is not prepared yet because of the fall of sin to walk with God. That's why God is bringing you into the desert, so that your character is changed, so that your language will be changed, so that your thoughts will be changed. Moses. Is, was in the desert for 40 years and after those 40 years God reveals himself to Moses and he sees God 
and he meets with God. And what does God do? He heals him, heals him, delivers him. But first, he God brought him into the word of, uh, into the house of words to Jethro, a friend of God who knew God, who taught him to walk in the word, who who taught him the characteristics of God, and how you could hear and see God, and how you answer God. Moses did not know the, the language or the voice of God, but Jethro, he has, but Jethro could teach him for 40 years. So when God, when Jethro got an order um, by Jethro, Moses was obedient. He had to learn to subordinate himself to Jethro and to follow his orders. Before you enter the ministry, you have to you have to have the experience to subordinate yourself and to humble yourself. The house of God is the house of humility and the house of subordinance. I was um, for years among other men of God, and I had to learn how to subordinate and to humble myself. I've never stood up against my pastor or was speaking bad against my pastor and you can't do this and, and I, no 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 I said and I said thank you Jesus I've blessed my pastor because they were tools to to change my character pastor where are you going to at the weekend I want to be a chauffeur I want to be a driver so I took a car and I um, was driving my pastor everywhere while I was driving, I asking him, we praying, ask. I'm a young man, I was a young man who wanted to learn. There's a deliverance in Strasbourg, my car, so we went there. And my, my children were only two years old, and we went by car. We learned and we grew. We had hunger, and we wanted to, we wanted to pay this price. Our children were sleeping in the back, We have so um, amazing men of God, or women of God, and we were free to accompany them everywhere we, they went. I have been in this school, and it cost, it, it cost me a lot. I had to learn to leave my ego and my pride. And I was in need of fathers in the spirit to, who told me, go to the left, I go left, to the to the right, I go right, without mourning and without telling him what does he think he is or to criticize. I've never spoke bad against my pastor or about my pastor with someone. If I saw the weakness in my pastor, I went to my knees and I prayed for him. I was honoring him in it because they are sacrificing their lives for us. My pastor was ready to to leave France and to come to my home and we to fast for three weeks and to pray with us. This was the way he he built up. He built it us. He built us, sorry. That so my character in the spirit a man of God without an anointing but without character will die. You need this character of this of this anointing. Many have the anointing but don't have the character of the anointing. Many have the anointing and even the power of God, but don't have the character of God. And we are here to work on it, that you can fulfill your ministry, that you will get to the aim, that your life will be um, secure. But the school of the Lord is very important. In the house of Jethro, it was the it was the church, and Moses started there. So, in the, in the house of Jethro, that he had children, and he had learned how a father was caring for the sheep and how to prophesy and how to serve in the, in the house of God. When the time was over, Jethro let him go. So, when my time was over in Belgium or in France, the men of God um, were called and they laid his hands on me, and others um, um, and made my ministry public and now I was confirmed and now I could go to Germany or be or to work in, or serve in Germany with small groups, prayer, fasting because the order of God was there 
but it's like a baby in your belly, and you have to bring it forth through fasting until it comes to its birth. And this birth is here, but we work on it because we have a higher higher calling to achieve. A lot of na a lot of s souls in this nation. We said we are a pilot project where ministries can be built and where gifts and gifts can be active. We are not the best church, but we are one of um, one of the churches. So that's why you are here today, so that God can work on you, so that God can brings you. We are in the house of Jethro, so where we can recognize and see God and learn about God and experience Him that we can go out and people can see, wow, he, he is the Lamb of God who is taking away the sins of the world. Moses, 14 years in the desert, 14 years, and another 30 years in the desert, and now God sends him out. After the 40 years with Jethro, he was separated, where he was isolated and seeking God. And then also he was spending 40 days um, twice on the mountain um, with God to hear the voice of God, to have the fullness of God, to recognize where are we going to, where, what is the way, what is God expecting of me, what is God planning. And if he knew it was not, it's not, these are not my works, these are not my sheep, they are the sheep of God. And to lead those sheep, you have to be seeking God constantly. One of the things important for a man or a woman of God, be silent, Close your mouth and listen. Don't speak a lot and listen a lot. We are speaking too much. We know too much. We, but the moment you are in the presence of the Lord, you know nothing. God knows everything. God knows everything. He has the leading. He leads your steps. That's why God is saying, God is, the man is planning his ways, but God is leading his steps. So a person who is speaking a lot can sin a lot. Speak less and seek the wisdom of God. Wisdom is, is re life relevant for the church. Sometimes you have the impression we are just improvising or exper experimenting. But we are... We look what God is, wants to do. How is He moving? And we have to to lead, to follow the steps of the Holy Spirit. That's why we have programs like deliverance, prophetic um, programs, fasting programs, so that everyone who is here learns how to serve and um, grows in the Spirit. God is good. Amen. We can stand up in the presence of the Lord. Moses was a humble person. He was a small brother of Aaron. But Moses was humble. Moses always gave God the honor. Even he, he argued with God because of the people because God wanted to destroy the people, but Moses started arguing. But if you, if you destroy this people, name, take, my, take my name out of the book of life. That's a spiritual dimension that you are ready to lose your salvation so that others can be saved. A man in the Bible, Paul, was speaking to the Hebrews, if I lose mine so that you can be saved, I will give it. Are you ready to die so that your family can live? Are you ready to die so that in Germany a fire can be started? And die in all areas so that Jesus can be seen in you. If you're ready, we pray for five minutes. We're at the end of the service now. Say, Lord, I'm ready to die. I'm ready to take my cross and follow you wherever you are going to. I am ready to say, no longer I live, even if it hurts me. You have called me out of the world. As Moses, he did not knew that he was the savior of, the, of Israel, that his name was great. Moses could have said, no, 
my name, my name is already great in Egypt. What do I need? But he knew. He knew that what does it serve a person to gain the world but to lose his soul? So he was ready to lose his fame. He was ready to lose his friends. He was ready to to go into the desert and to stay into the desert with scorpions and um, and snakes. And he was ready to stand under the sun and to to eat to eat honey as John did too. Moses did in the desert. So everyone who comes to God has to go through the desert. Jesus also went through the desert for 40 days. Paul was in the, in the desert. Aaron was in the desert. All of these men were. Joseph had to go through the, the desert. Death almost killed Joseph. There is no man or woman of God that who wants to serve God who has not go through the school of, of or the desert. We are in the school of the desert where God is working on us. Say, Lord, my my marriage has to go into into the desert to take away out of my marriage what is destroying things or take out everything that is distracting us from you, Father. Father, I want to be focused on you. I want to be. I want to be focused on you. I want to see you, you face to face. I want to see your glory, Lord, and experience your glory, Lord. No longer I live, not my priorities, but your priorities. No longer my works, but your works, Father. Do what you want to do out of my children. Do out of my life what you want to do, Father. I beg you. If I am the Joseph of this generation, do do it. If I'm the Moses of this generation, do it. Do it what you want and what's pleasing to you, God. Because you said you came down to save your people and you came down to, through my life and I give you my life and I give you my house. I give you everything, Lord. Everything shall um, be yours. In church, everything shall be yours. Father, in the name of Jesus, all should be at your disposal. Nothing shall be, nothing shall distract me or hinder me to serve the Lord. Every mountain has to be destroyed that stands in front of me. Yet every blockage has to be destroyed so that God can work through me. Everywhere we are, through traveling, we will be testimonies of of Jesus. If it's in, in Turkey or in Africa, we will be testimonies for Jesus Christ. Everywhere we go to, we. In Europe, in Asia, in America, we are born to be um, testi testifiers of Jesus Christ. Because it is written, it is, we receive the force, and we, Father, give us the strength, Father. Give us, give us the strength to be your testi uh, testifiers. To be your witnesses. Oh, wife, be or husband, be a witness in your marriage, so that when your wife sees you, she will see Jesus. So if your husband sees you, Jesus will be seen through your character. You, you are a wise woman. You are a wise husband. You testify Jesus in your life. Your children will see and recognize Jesus in your life. Mo mother and father, they will, they, they testify for Jesus. They are witness for Jesus. They are disciples of Jesus because so that our lives can be a testimony for everyone also, also on the work so that my colleagues can testify that I am a follower of Jesus that people can see that Jesus Christ lives in me Amen Thank you Jesus that you do out of my life that you do that you make me a witness that I can that through my life I can testify and I testify Now be the witness for the Messiah, and I will grow, and I will go to the until to the return of Jesus Christ. Nothing will separate me from the love of God, and from the ministry of God. Nothing will be separate in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, my house will be my house stand. My house will my stand. My children will stand. We stand, Father. This church stand, and. And we will we, we will be stronger in love, stronger in 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 Jesus Christ. 
to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. No. Before me. The world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me, the cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back, no turning back, no turning back. No no turning back, no turning back, no turning back, no turning back. Give the Lord an applause. Give the Lord an applause. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Almighty One. Thank you, Almighty God. And thank you, Jesus, you wonderful God. Hallelujah, Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Those preachings is to encourage you not to give you a bad conscience. If I say sometimes I'm, I give my disciples a clap, because that me meaning that I'm, I'm strict sometimes so that something good comes out of um, you. The time where we allowed everything is over. It's the time when you when you when you see someone is living in fornication and and is preaching even on stage. You can tell him, come down, come down, and first bring your life into order. You can say, let the keyboard and go down. The, the time um, you serve God and you could do what you want is over. Where people lived in fornication and started preaching, you can go to your brother and say, no, for the security and for the safety of the church, come down. No matter where you go to, and you see people who serve, a friend of you serves, but he lives in the wrong race, you say, you can tell him, come down come down from the stage because it has to be holy. He can come and sit, but to serve in the wrong ways, we don't want to do this. We, we want to experience the blessings and also the, the power, but only um, how God wants us to. God bless you.